Hi, let us talk about the shear reinforcement in concrete members. There are a series of equations used to design for the shear resistance of concrete members. This include VRDC, VRDC minimum, VRD max, which is later derived into VRD max 22 degree, VRD max 45 degree. Reorganize the equations for DRD max. You will get the equations to determine the angle, which in this angle shall later be used to determine the amount of shear reinforcement in the equations to determine the shear reinforcement. Also, Eurocode specify the minimum amount of shear reinforcement using the equation here. Now, if you observe one of the examples that we have discussed in one of our previous videos regarding the design of shear reinforcement of a concrete beam, you see three types of shear loads. We have Vmax, VEF, and VED. To summarize this, we have VRD max 22 degree, VRD max 45 degree, VRDC, ASW per S representing the amount of shear reinforcement, and ASW per S nominal representing the minimum amount of shear reinforcement required in the concrete beam. In terms of the load, we have Vmax, VEF, and VED. Having so many types of shear resistance and loads, it can be quite confusing. Therefore, in this videos, we're going to put them together in order to find their relationships. To explain this, first we must understand the basic concept of shear resistance. First, a concrete member has its own shear resistance. This is represented by VRDC. This VRDC represents the shear resistance of the concrete without any shear reinforcement and it is determined by VRDC and VRDC minimum, whichever is greater. If you observe the equations for VRDC and VRDC minimum, you see they are all in the functions of BWD which represent the effective shear areas of the section. Now, if the section is in the rectangular shape, the effective shear areas it will be as identified here. We are talking about the width times the effective depth. Instead of having the effective shear area equivalent to the total height of the section, the regions beyond the effective depth has been ignored. Assuming at the ultimate state, this region will have been cracked. And then the equations for VRDC, if you are talking about the flank section, the flank part cannot be considered in the resistance of the shear loop. The effective shear area will still be these sections the BW times the effective depth. This ignores the flame parts and also the potential crack regions. In the function here, you have K, which is determined by the effective depth, and you have rho 1, representing the reinforcement ratio, quantifying a ratio in terms of the areas of longitudinal reinforcement per unit effective areas of the shear loops. Now, this VRDC is to be compared with the shear loops. If the VRDC provided is greater than the shear loops, there is no need for the shear reinforcement. We will assume that 100% shear loops shall be taken by the concrete alone. Now, if VRDC here is less than the shear loops, 
That means the concrete section alone is insufficient to provide shear resistance. In this case, you will need shear reinforcement. Now, based on the principles of the Eurocode, 100% of the shear load shall be taken by the shear reinforcement. Which in the actual situations, the shear resistance of a reinforced concrete section it will be due to the concrete plus the resistance given by the shear reinforcement. However, when come to the design using Eurocode, it assumes that the shear resistance is fully taken by the shear reinforcement. Eurocode ignores the contributions of the concrete in terms of the shear resistance in the case when the shear reinforcement is required. And Eurocode take the concrete part as the safety measures when the shear reinforcement is provided. Now having these two concepts established, we can proceed with our discussions with all these equations. You've seen the equations for VRDC. Normally we will check these equations when we encounter the slabs and staircase and even the retaining walls. These three types of structural elements are common in one aspect, where the effective cross-sectional areas of these structural elements are relatively large as compared to the shear loops acting onto these members. What we need to do, we will just need to make sure that the VRDC is always greater than the shear loops and then we can leave those structural elements without any shear reinforcement as for the series of VRD max and also the amount of shear reinforcement provided normally we use them in the beam footing power caps and etc these are the structural elements having the effective shear areas relatively small as compared to the shear loops. Now let us talk about VRD max. You know that this VRD max is derived on the basis of analogous truss of a beam, which assume a beam is in the form of a truss. You have tension members, compression members, tension regions taken by the shear reinforcement and compression members here representing the diagonal truss. We call these regions as the strut. This VRD max is derived on the basis of the maximum compressive strength of this diagonal strut. It represents the largest resistance can be given by the beam when subjected to the load. If this VRD max is exceeded, even though you have shear reinforcement, the structure will fail. And this kind of failure, it will be due to the crushings of these regions, and it is brittle. This brings to our next concept, where your VRD max, when it is less than the shear loops, that means the section will fail in the brittle manner. You will have to redesign or repropose another section. You will expect the member fail even though you provide sufficient shear reinforcement. Having this VRD max established, we have these three equations. Now, Euroco assume the angle here which is the gradient of this diagonal strut ranging from 22 degree to 45 degree. Why is it so? First, you need to understand when a beam member is subjected to low degree of load, the gradient of this diagonal strut will be milder, where the angle here is relatively small. As the shear loops increase, this angle increases. 
it increase to a limit which is equals to 45 degree then the member fails so Eurocooks limits it to 45 degree the actual failure angles may be greater than 45 degree setting it to be 45 degree would be the safety measures for the angle greater than that and when the loop is relatively small the angle will also be small now if this angle is less than 22 degree Eurocode will set it to be 22 degree this is also another safety measures assuming that the section is subjected to the load equivalent to 22 degree angles which in the actual case is much more less than this having these two range set substitute it into the angle here you produce these two equations this links to our design procedures here the VRD max 45 degree will set the limits of the sections if the loops exceeding this you will have to redesign the sections as you know the section is going to fail having VRD max 22 degree will set the lower limits here so if the loop is less than VRD max 22 degree we will assume the loops will be equivalent to VRD max 22 degree therefore we will assume the angle now equals to 22 degree what if the angles fall between 22 degree to 45 degree you will use these equations to determine the actual angle once you confirm the angle you can substitute the angle into the equation here in order to determine the design shelling of the beam and then the amount of shelling provided will need to be greater than the minimum shelling as specified by the Eurocode with that we have covered all the resistance and shear reinforcement for a concrete section now let us talk about Vmax, VEF and VED you may refer to these slides let's say now you have a member simply supported analyze the member and produce the shear force diagram the Vmax here is referring to the center of the support as defined based on the effective length of the member the support here can be the bearings to support the simply supported beam it can also due to the column supporting the beam and etc now VEF here is referring to the surface of the support it is located at the edge of the support this will be the shear plan taken by the concrete and then for you to determine the actual value for the VEF you can refer to the shear force diagram find the locations of the surface of the support and get the actual value here after that find a distance equivalent to the effective depth of the beam you will get the VED the relevant value can be obtained from the shear force diagram at that particular location now this VED here shall be taken by the shear link now to be more specific Vmax which is referring to the center of the support here represent the analyzed value on the basis of the effective span of the member this value is the highest of all the shear loops as for the VEF this is referring to the concrete plan at the surface or the edge of the support now this shear loop shall be taken by the concrete as for the VED 
it is located at one effective depth distance from the face of the support and this shear loops shall be taken by the shear reinforcement from the typical shear force diagram Vmax will be the highest VEF will be moderate and VET will be the lowest having this established when you want to compare in terms of the resistance all the equations related to the concrete shall be referred to the VEF we mentioned that VRD max is derived on the basis of the compressive strength of the compressive strut here this will lead to VRD max 22 degree VRD max 45 degree and the angle are all associated with the concrete which theoretically they shall be referred to the VEF as for the equations for the shear reinforcement this ultimately shall be referred to the VED that's why in the examples that we discussed in our previous videos the equations VRD max 22 degree and VRD max 45 degrees are compared with BEF and then later the calculated resistance by the shear reinforcements are compared with VED this represents the fundamental approach which is more economical you need to specifically identify which equations is refers to which type of shear loop now if you are using the fundamental approach it is more tedious in determining the shear loops and this can be quite confusing that's why in our another example which we discuss about designing the shear reinforcement in the flank sections the VRD max 22 degree VRD max 45 degree is compared with VED why is it so? in that example we will use straight this as the VED since this is the largest value of all if we design the member pass based on this value here the section will definitely be passed because this is more conservative so the simplified method will assume the VED equals to Vmax and also equals to the VEF on that basis all the equations related to the shear loops including the shear reinforcement will always be checked against the largest shear loops as acquired from the shear force